Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Final Fantasy Legend. In the last part, we got here to the Sky World and did some stuff around here and then we got betrayed by someone we were trying to rescue. Great. And since the last time I've gotten Callista's agility max out and also did some obvious grinding because now I have some money money. And I bought some more things just because I could. And now we're gonna finish this world off because honestly there's not much left. The castle is now actually over here next to the igloo, though, and if we actually check inside of it, we'll see that Jean is no longer here, meaning they already have her captured. Now, what the game wants you to do next is go into the flying castle and find Biakko, who, from previous experience, we know is on the seventh floor. However, it's a waste of time. You're supposed to go up there, find he's not there, and then backtrack down, and then you're supposed to obviously be fighting the guards as you go. And that's a waste of time. All you need to do is enter the castle and then leave in order to trigger the next sequence. Which is why I'm not going to waste your time and only do that. You could potentially farm the soldiers around here for some decent gold, but I already have enough. And now we're over here by the sacred place. And missing now? Ha ha ha! This is it! I've got the white sphere! Miliel, you did well! But now I have no use for you. Miliel! Sister! Miliel... You fiend! You're nothing. Just in time to see the power of Sphere. Next boss fight, which we get a sneak attack on, excellent, is Biakko, 1000 HP, 5500 gold, immune to ice and uh, status ailments. He only has a couple attacks though, besides that. He only has a sword attack, which does decent damage, an ice attack, which if you're weak to it, uh, watch out for that, and an attack called Sphere. However, Sphere does nothing. That's actually a bit of a hint towards something that's gonna happen. Three heads is the best way to go, because then you can take him down in like two rounds, though. Kind of pathetic for the supposed white tiger of the... four... symbols of the things that I'm forgetting how to word. Either way, he's down. I won't have it. And Biako and the Sphere are destroyed. Hey, the Sphere is gone! Shh! I'm sorry. I've been so foolish. It's not your fault. It was bound to happen. Really? Miliel cries and a teardrop falls and turns into the sphere. Well, that's convenient. What happened? This is our secret. Lucy, take this sphere. Sister, don't leave me! And then she dies. Well then. That was a plot. Either way, we now have the white sphere. I was wrong earlier. The previous one we got was the blue sphere. They accidentally called it the white one at some point. Run, quickly! Yeah, you, um, you're supposed to, I guess we're supposed to be under attack or something, but we're really not. Either way, that's our business done in the sky. Pretty short, huh? Mind you, that's more or less the game in the nutshell. Now, one thing I recommend you do before entering the tower is using the inn, which is what I'm going to do. However, once you leave the town, as I cut out in a moment, you gotta notice something. The glider's gone. If you want to use the glider and get back, like, to Hidden Town or something, what you have to do is go back to the pub in the town and talk to someone there. They'll make the glider spawn outside the town for you. Either way, let's re-enter the tower, because we're more or less done with our business in this area. And encounter our next two enemies, Pea Flower and Sharks. Pea Flowers have 175 HP, 400 gold. They can tentacle you, which is gross. Pollen you, which I think stuns you or something, and then they can put you to sleep for a turn or two. And Sharks, if I can hit the right buttons, because my keyboard's been weird recently. Sharks have 175 HP, they're water elemental, and they're weak to electricity, immune to fire, and then they just have a Tuscan head attack. Nothing too special. Seriously though, I think that the, the plant type enemy sprites there is probably the weirdest one in the game, because I still don't know what they're supposed to be. I mean, they're obviously plants, but what's going on in that mess? Doors locked by the magic of white, so let's use that white sphere. Actually, if you look carefully, you can actually see Chinese-Japanese characters in the, uh, spheres. I've only just now noticed that. Huh. I'm bad. Either way, with that, we now have access to the next bit of the tower, which is probably the hardest bit. And immediately has new enemies for us. Harpies! Harpies have 231 HP, 600 gold, protected from Quake, and they can either nail you, bite you, or sing to you, which does some sort of status ailment. Nothing too special. It's weird. The enemies... The enemies in this game have a very odd difficulty streak to them, because a lot of them are very easy, but there's like three or four in each area that are like... a good tier or two in difficulty above the rest. And next enemy is an anaconda! 
And Akandas have 231 HP, 600 gold, and they can only poison you with a poison attack. Very simple enemies. And at this point, because you have three heads if you're following this as a guide or a musket, they should go down within one round no matter what. You can run into groups of them, but honestly, they're nothing that special. It's also around now that the tower starts getting a bit more maze-like. But thankfully, most of the layouts are still fairly simple. But before we want to head right there, we actually want to head down into this area. This is one of my least favorite rooms in the game. Why? Well, first off, some of the enemies are some of the hardest in the game, like ogres, because these guys are pretty powerful for this point. It's actually the exact same ogre we had a while back. Ogres have 262 HP, they're not 900 gold. They can punch you, they can bite you, or they can put you to sleep. And that bite hurts. But the big thing about this entire room is that there are hidden uh, areas of tiles that have wind on them that push you in a certain direction. And it's really annoying to progress in here if you don't have a map because you don't know what pushes you where. And I hate that. And most of the items in here aren't that good. Sure, you can get elixirs, then you can get some sort of potion over here, I believe. But the elixir is the only thing you should really come in here for. There's a type of weapon in here, which is the... I think it's called the Vampic Sword. But we'll get to that in a moment. Either way, next new enemy is a Dragon 2. I didn't run into the Dragon 1. 262 HP of lizard types, enemies. Uh, they're main, that's more or less a dragon type. They're immune to Quake, they have a Flame Attack, Nail, and Tusk, so they're pretty simple. Yeah, it's weird. The Dragon line is actually the only one that gets, like, numbered to it. There's Dragons 1 through, I think, 5? Yeah. And they appear all over the place, and we'll see them as we go, though. Mostly. I, I actually forget how many of them we run into. Either way, the Vampic Sword we're going to be finding in a moment is a pretty interesting sword. The closest thing I can compare it to at the moment is uh, the Blood Sword from Final Fantasy II. Uh, 50 uses, it's a mana damage based weapon, and it drains enemy HP and transfers it to the user. However, it's honestly not that good overall in my eyes. Which is why I'm going to sell it the next opportunity. Though I've got a fi speaking of Final Fantasy II, I should mention, technically speaking, this was actually the only the second RPG that Square ever published in the US. Before this, there was only the original Final Fantasy. So technically speaking for us, until Final Fantasy IV came out, this was Final Fantasy II, which is kind of odd. Either way, next enemy is a wrestler. Wrestlers have 295 HP, and they only have one attack, and that's Harite, which is one of the usual martial arts and weapons that gets better the more you use it. Not too annoying, though. Though the encounter right around here starts getting kind of odd. I think this is one of the most inconsistent for, uh, encounter rates I've ever seen in a game. Sometimes it's absurdly low, other times it's absurdly high. Either before we want to head up there, we want to go over here and grab the Saw. The Saw is a very interesting weapon I'll be getting into in a moment. First off, we got a new enemy, am am Amoebas. Sorry, I can barely... I've always had trouble saying that word for some reason. Amoebas have 295 HP, they're water elemental, so they're weak to electricity and immune to fire. They can melt on you like we can to them, bother us, or acid us. Acid, I think, can poison you or something, it's nothing too bad. Although we do want to eventually get some of their meat for one of the characters, I forget which. Either way, the saw is a very interesting weapon. What the saw is supposed to do is, if your strength is much higher than the enemy's defense, it's an instant kill. However, the formula was accidentally reversed in production, so that if your strength is much lower than the enemy's defense, it's an instant kill. Which means that it's basically useless for random battles, however, in boss fights, it is obscene. In fact, the final boss, who we'll see in a few parts, who has around 200 defense, it's more or less an instant kill no matter what. It's a glitch, and I absolutely love it, and if you want to use it, go ahead. I rarely ever do, but if you want to, it's there. In fact, uh, this glitch was actually paid homage to in the final battle of Final Fantasy XIII, where the final boss is susceptible to instant death for some reason. Well, uh, well, it's a homage to this, but I hate... Final bosses should never be immune on immune to instant death unless it's luck-based, things like Joker Doom. Either way, here's a little area. We haven't had rain in a long time. You don't say. I'm thirsty, bring me some water. Okay, we, well, we can see that there's a hole of water right there. Keep in mind this room shape and where that uh, bit of water is there for later. Because it might come in handy. By the way, a bit of behind the scenes trivia. Uh, I did do a bit of a test playthrough for this game, and in my test playthrough, I was here for about an hour because I was running into an enemies every two steps, and it sucked. But we do get some new enemies, Triceratopses and Gazers. 
Triceruses have 295 HP, they're weak to ice, they have bash and four horns. Four horns especially really hurts. But nothing really special beyond that. And Gazers have 202 HP, immune to quake, and they can beam you and warning. And I think warning just means you can't get a sneak attack on them. Not a very hard encounter. Although, this is one of the more common uh, encounters for the next couple floors. Uh, you might run into this specific formation quite a bit. I know I did, like, four times. And here we get an army helm, which is a decent upgrade for Callista. Which is why I'm giving it to her and just gonna throw away the other helmet. Part of me does wish that the music for the tower changed as you progressed through it. But, sadly, couldn't be. I'm assuming due to, like, system limitations at the time when they were working with the hardware. I don't know. Either way, next to enemy is a Crawler. Crawlers have 330 HP, 900 gold, weak to ice, they can poison them with the poison skin ability, and then they just have bite, tail, and web, so not very threatening. Though they look derpy as hell, and I love it. Honestly, around now, the monsters tend to just get kind of annoying, because they either have a... Hmm, how to explain it? Our attacks are powerful, but they're just not powerful enough to kill them in one round, so it starts getting really tedious to do some fights. I guess is how I'd explain it. Oh, this room formation looks familiar. Water is rising in the lake, and we are in danger. I can't swim. What am I going to do? I didn't do it. Bob started it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I'm sorry, it's my fault. I threw garbage in the lake. Why would you do that? Where, do you, where would you even get garbage from? There was a hole at the bottom of the lake. Well, if you remember, so the garbage is clogged up the bottom, and now the octopuses have water. It's raining! It's raining, man! Hallelujah! Either way, with that, I actually had to cut back to this room. Ashura is the Archfiend. Ashura sets forth his four fiends, which now these kids are all playing as. So, and yeah, now we know the identity of the man controlling the fiends. It's Ashura. And in here is actually a castle with a pea sword, which is more or less a better psychic, uh, a better pea knife. And in fact, I recommend you replace the pea knife with that if it's on low enough charges, but I decided to keep both for some reason. Another group of X-Potions, which honestly, around now, elixirs start happening, so they're not very useful. And another revive. Revives, just sell them, really. You don't need them. Because the way I play the game, uh, I save almost after every battle when I'm not recording, so... I don't die anyway. By the way, those last maybe three encounters, all that all those formation with the Triceras, Gazers, and Anacondas, it was ridiculous. <laughs> you do need to be careful, though, because with the way I have my monster set up, like the Chimera, the, the Chimera has pretty low HP, all things considered, for its defense at this point. So you can get killed pretty easily. Either way, next new enemy is a Jelly. Jellies have 295 HP, they're immune, uh, they're immune to status ailments, weapon, and quake. However, they're weak to fire still, and they have Melt and Bother, as most jelly-type monsters do. So yeah. Either way, this is actually a nice little area to do some farming. Why? There's a healing pool right here. It's over spikes, but that one or two damage isn't gonna hurt. But around here is where I usually grind for amoeba meat. So, I'm going to jump cut to a fight with an amoeba right now. Really, though, we fought amoebas before. It's the exact same fight. They're a bit less common on this floor than they are in other ones, but you want to get their meat for... Uh, Canada? I think... Uh, yeah. For a gunfish, which is more or less just another transition monster. Gunfishes are not the best, because they only have bite, squirt. They're immune to fire, at least, but they're weak to electricity. Not the best. But thankfully, they'll get changed again fairly soon, if I recall. But they have decent defense, so it's worth putting them in front of Envy, at least, if you have things set up like I do. I don't know why I showed the stats again. Maybe I was just checking to make sure I had the stats right. I wouldn't be surprised with the way I have to record things. Either way, we're about at the next world, because here's Old Man again. Nothing works against Suzaku. You can only run. I'm assuming Suzaku is the final of the Four Fiends. In fact, he is. And he's a random battle! You cannot kill him. Well, you can, technically, but it doesn't count as you killing him. He is a random battle everywhere in this world, and honestly, he sucks to fight. So, if you can run from him, do it. And the thing is about running, which is why I'm showing all these fights against him, is that it kind of sucks because it's like a 50% chance. I don't like it. 
Also, as you can see, Kane got blinded there, so that kind of sucks. Oh, hello, person. I saw you run there. We should probably follow her. I'm going over Suzaku's stats, but it's not the real Suzaku, so I'm not gonna- I'm gonna wait until the actual fight against him, so, yeah. But we do have a new enemy here, Stone Man! Stone Men have... 330 HP, and they only have one attack, which is Kick. 1200 gold, though, so if you can run into them, they're pretty decent for experience. Or gold, rather. I have decent strength, though. 55, I think. Oh, well, you got into trouble quick. Ah! Stop! And we got more new enemies. Up and Adam, Adam Ants. Adam Ants have 295 HP, 1200 gold, Nail, Bite, Acid, and D-Beam. I think D-Beam's actually a pretty devastating attack if they use it against you, but they go down pretty quickly. Thank you. You'll find a town ahead of you. Goodbye. Can I have your name? No? Okay. Yeah, I don't get that exchange much. Either way, here's the town. And it's the most high-tech town we've seen yet. But there is an in here, and I recommend you use that as usual. Yeah, in Sally, don't cure certain status ailments. I'm gonna need to buy some eye drops to cure him. Emma Yoko Town is to the northeast, but because of Suzaku, we're afraid to travel there. Don't go to the pub where the gangs are. A huge atomic power plant's in the center of the city. Good lord, why do you have an atomic power plant? By the way, this is actually where the guild and shops are, so let's go get some stuff from here. Uh, there's actually some decent stuff we can get at this one. Uh, one thing I do recommend you buy is a Balkan for Callista. It's more or less an upgraded Super, uh, Super, Super Metroid gun. Super Machine Gun. Submachine Gun. Wow, I'm terrible at, uh, names. And you're gonna want to buy a suit of armor. We're not gonna equip that to anyone yet, but you're gonna want that for later, because it's one of the best, uh, defensive items in the game. And let's see what we got at the item shop. Ah, they got HP 400 and 600, so I actually do recommend getting some of those so you can get the HP up eventually. In fact, as you may have noticed, uh, between some parts ago, I got Callista's HP up to 420. Why that number? I think you know. <laughs> oh, hey, we're on the 16th floor. Yeah, it's weird. For being an all a legendary tower, there's not that many floors to it. I think the, I think it caps off at like 20-something. So, yeah. There's a secret path into the sewer in the northern subway. Oh, this is the House of Life. I don't like the way the Houses of Life usually look, actually. The drainage pipe of the atomic plant is connected to the sewer. Okay, so getting a bit of constructed narrative for this world. Suzaku will not chase you underground. That's why you have to go through the tunnels, because then you don't have to fight Suzaku. Well, hello there, biker masks. If you want a drink here, you must speak first. Don't do it. You're no match for him. Okay, pal. You fight me. I guess I have no choice. That's right. Let's step outside. Don't be stupid. You stay out of this. Haven't we met? Oh, what a coincidence. Brother, this is what happened. This is the person we rescued earlier. That's all our story. I see. You're also going after Suzaku. Suzaku's force field is too strong. We're making a machine to neutralize it. We still need two or three more parts. Haven't you found them? You'll find them in Akiba. You may find the location of Akiba at the library. We'll find the parts. Good luck. You can take my bike. And with that, we now have our objective for this world. Find the library so we can find the uh, locations of the four part, three parts rather. And we have a bike, which is a bit faster than walking. I think encounter rates is lower down it. And we want to immediately head to this uh, cave to the northeast. Now in this area, there's a certain enemy I want to encounter for uh, meat. So let's grind around for it first. You can encounter it a bit easier in later areas, but we need to find an ammo knight. Ammonites have 409 HP, they're water elemental, so they're weak to electricity, immune to fire. They have an 8 legs attack, which is kind of damaging. Bite, which does does damage. Shell, which increases their defenses. And Ink. Nothing too bad, but we do want to get their meat for Kaneda, I believe, so we can get him out of that stupid transition monster. Uh, let's see. Yep, 
for a Tororo, which is the next slime type enemy or monster. And it's one of the best ones too. Look at that HP count. Melt and bother as usual. Still uh, immune to para and weapon quake, but weak to fire. But look at that mana, 65. He's gonna get a lot of damage out of melt. And I've arranged my party as such, though I want to put Kaneda on the front. But with that, we're just about done here. With that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part seven of Final Fantasy Legend, we'll be heading into the library and seeing what we can do about this world's plot. See you guys then.